starting by the local examination of the thyroid, uh, it's very important to be at the same level with the patient and the exposure must be including the face and the neck and the chest wall. Why the chest wall? To see what we call what we call the mediastinal syndrome with presence of dilated veins like that, presence of dilated veins over the chest wall, that signifies what we call retrosternal extension of the thyroid. So your examination must include the faces and the neck and the chest wall. This is the exposure of the patient. Of course, the examination of the face is reserved later on to search for the what we call toxic facies uh, by the toxic manifestations in the eye or myxidematous facies uh, by presence of myxidematous features. And then we focus on the local examination of the thyroid. The neck may be slightly extended, slightly extended to show the swelling as, as we see. What about this swelling? Is it focal or diffuse? As we see, what we call the site of the swelling is diffuse swelling, taking the whole thyroid gland. So, what about the site of the swelling? Is it focal or diffuse? It is diffuse swelling. What about the size or relative size? Of course, as you see, the relative size may be a size of melon, a size of melon. It is a very large one. What about the shape of the swelling? It is butterfly taking the whole thyroid. What about the border? The border is well defined, especially the lower border. I can see the lower border to exclude the what we call retrosternal extension. What about the surface of the swelling by inspection? By inspection, the surface of the swelling is a smooth surface with apparent lobulation. Smooth with apparent lobulation. It is a smooth with apparent lobulation. It is nodular surface. What about the skin over the swelling? As we see, we will comment on edema, redness, to signify inflammation. Edema and redness. Edema or redness. Scar of previous operation or scar of biopsy. Presence of sinus or ulcer presence of dilated veins and as we see there is dilated veins as we see there is dilated veins and the presence of dilated veins signifies signifies compression manifestations compression manifestations is there a visible pulsation or not there is no visible pulsation what about movement with the swallowing it is mobile up and down with deglutition and swallowing it is mobile up and down with deglutition so Swellings that moves up and down with deglutition that are swellings contained in, in the pretracheal fascia, uh, the thyroid and larynx and the contents uh, surroundings. So it is most probably thyroid swelling, it is diffuse swelling, it is nodular in surface, diffuse swelling and nodular in surface, there is dilated veins signifying compression manifestations. To shift into the palpation, superficial palpation to feel for hotness and gentle touch to and while seeing the faces of the patient for tenderness this is what we call superficial palpation what about the deep palpation deep palpation must be from the back of the patient maybe from the front and it is better to be from the back of the patient with both hands like that i will stand behind the patient i will stand to support one loop and feel the other loop by the other hand to support one loop and feel the other with my hand to feel what we call both loops number two the isthmus try to feel the trachea if you can feel the trachea to follow the larynx this is the larynx to try to feel the tracheal rings try to examine the lymph nodes try to examine examine the lymph nodes and lastly try to palpate the carotid bulbs and this is the sternomastoid muscle try to feel what we call the carotid bulbs i am feeling now the carotid bulbs and if the carotid bulbs is absent this is what we call bearish sign bearish sign absent carotid pulsation due to infiltration by malignancy it is positive bearish sign and this is the stigmata of uh, palpation by palpation 
the gland is diffusely enlarged, smooth surface with nodularity and lobulation. This is nodular goiter as we palpate. Of course, we uh, comment on the site of the swelling, then the size of the swelling, again by palpation, about the surface and consistency. Here the consistency is variable. Some nodules are firm, some nodules are hard in consistency, so it is variable in consistency. What about the mobility and fixity? We can pinch the skin, I can pinch the skin over, it is not fixed to the skin. What about the mobility within the neck? It is mobile inside the neck. This is uh, uh, to test the mobility, is it, is it mobile or fixed? And fixity may be due to malignancy or may be due to thyroiditis, thyroiditis. Again, try to feel the lower border to exclude retrosternal extension. I'm feeling the lower border. Uh -huh. Then try to examine the trachea and by following the larynx, this is the laryngeal prominence, try to follow it. This is the trachea. Trachea is separable from the mass and it is palpable. Again, try to examine the carotid pulsation behind the sternomastoid muscle. I can feel the carotid pulsation now. It is freely palpable, carotid pulsation. And if it is absent, this is positive Perry's sign. This is positive Perry's sign. And lastly, what we call Kochar test and we will ask the patient to elevate the arms and extend the neck. If she feels suffocation, this is positive Kochar test that may denote severe compression manifestation. This is Kochar test. By elevating both arms and extending the neck like that, the patient may feel suffocation. This is positive Kochar test. Kochar test. Lastly, we examine the lymph nodes, cervical lymph nodes. Here there is no palpable any cervical lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are not. Uh, uh, palpable. Then the percussion, I will do direct percussion over the manubrium sterni. If it is dull, this may signify retrosternal extension and to feel what we call pulsation also, this is by palpation and to hear by the stethoscope uh, machinery murmur, what we call machinery murmur due to uh, AV shunts inside the thyroid in a case of Graves disease or primary toxic goiter. This is the use of auscultation or, or stethoscope. And if there is uh, palpable pulsations and audible perui in the stethoscope, this signifies the primary toxic goiter. So by conclusion, by conclusion, there is no eye manifestation in the faces of the patient and there is a multinodular diffuse enlargement of the thyroid gland. This is a nodule. This is another nodule. It is smooth surface with apparent lobulation and nodularity of the gland. There is dilated veins means compression or retrosternal extension, but the lower border can be filled and the sternum is resonant by percussion. There is no pulsation. There is no audible per we or machinery murmur. So the most probable diagnosis of this case is diffuse multinodular goiter. Of course, I will examine the hand. I will examine the hand for, and I will examine the pulse for uh, uh, water hammer pulse. I will examine for clubbing. I will examine for tremors and so on. So of course, this is detailed examination of the hand uh, uh, to exclude primary toxic goiter. So my diagnosis of this case is is a simple multinodular goiter, uncomplicated by retrosternal extension, uncomplicated by toxicity, but there is what we call some compression manifestation. This may be an, an indication for surgery. And lastly, thank you.